rest on your feet and turn with me to the book of Jonah. The first chapter of the book of Jonah. Amen. The book of Jonah. And start, we're just going to lift verses 14 and 15. In the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. The King James translation reads like this. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. 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 Now, 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 I say good morning. I say good morning. Yes. Good morning. I, I keep forgetting. I write it down since leaving. Amen. Amen. Uh, God has been good to us. He, he, he lifted in my spirit early that, that he's all the way good, but we give him halfway praises. Oh, my God. Uh, we, we, <laughs> we pity Pat, as they would say. But God has been good. But when God gets all the way good to you, as Rick has already said, you will just bust open. Yes. Have, you ever, have you ever seen somebody in church and the Lord has just been so good yes. and you wonder why they're acting up yes. and showing out? You can tell because they didn't come in to show out. They might not have their showing out clothes on. Uh, you ever seen that where, where the lady would sit? It happens to it happened to my wife, praise the Lord. She will have her bad shoes on and her beads and stuff. And the, uh, the Lord will get, and all of a sudden the beads will be on the ground. <laughs> you know, we got to take your shoes off to shout, now you know. Amen. And, and so God is, is demanding of us yes. that we say it out. Rick already spoke to it. That we speak out to the world our testimony. Yes. Uh, we have to stop shutting up our testimony mm. uh, because other people are blessed by your testimony. Yes. Understand, Sister Cummings hears that Sister Matthews that God already did that. Yes. That, that what you're praying for, God has answered that prayer three times yes. in one house, three times, three children. Mm. Uh, that God has already done that kind of thing, and so we overcome <laughs> by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. Yes. So you can do whatever you want to. When we give God praise, you can clap your hands. Yes. Just don't shut up. My you can run around the church, hey, but just, just don't shut up. Yes. You can scream and give him the fruit of your lips. You can do whatever you want to, but whatever it is, don't shut up. Yes. Oh my God. You got to give God out of your mouth. He has to hear. The world needs to hear yes. that we serve a today, 2018 God. Yes. Yes. Not just a good old days God, but a today God. Yes. The young people need to hear, they need to have it text to them on social media that God still reigns. Yeah, yeah. Put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook, whatever. That God, the same God who blessed Martin Luther King is blessing us right now. Oh, yes. We got to speak it out. We have to speak it out. So like I said before, don't shut up. Amen. Do what you want to. Say what you want to, but don't shut up. Don't shut Amen. Up. Amen. So, so truly we thank the Lord for Black History Month has begun. One of my favorite months. I will not going to get into the history of it again. <clears throat> but Black History Month was originally a week. If you're 50 years old, <laughs> praise the Lord like me, or older, <laughs> and you will remember when it was Black History Week. They didn't give us a month. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you had to write your essay on Martin Luther King. <laughs> and you heard the I Have a Dream speech, and that was it. Amen. But, but it has been expanded, and we thank God, even though it's the shortest and coldest month of the year, <laughs> that, that, that black history is being examined. Mm. And so I am kind of a you know amateur historian myself. So I read, I read black history and try to pursue these things all the time. And I, I began to read about slave revolts. Slave revolts. Mm. And in the triangular trade, that we found out that there were four times as many slave revolts in the Caribbean colonies as they were in Newark. Mm. Right? You know, because you know in the triangle, they stopped there first and dropped our cousins off. Right. And then came and dropped us off. Right? But but our cousins tend to fight, tend to fight them on the sugar plantations of Santo Domingo and in the Bahamas. They tended to fight them more than we did. Right? And, and I wondered why that was, and I began to read a theory about it. So God, the theme today the Lord wants me to leave is lighten your boat. Lighten your boat. You see, 
in, in, in the beginning, in the, in the original days of slavery, in, in the beginning of the West African slave trade, the first slaves were not caught like Kukikite, like we saw in groups. They were not chased down in the woods, in the jungles areas, and caught with chattels. That's not the way it happened. The first slaves were given away. See, what they, there were black people giving their prisoners of war away. Black folk gave other black folk away. That's how this whole thing began. There was black on black crime that began this whole thing. Right? And, and so what would happen is, entire villages that had been captured would be given to the slaveholder. And the slaveholder would literally pack everybody and everything up. Right? All you and all yours, and take your whole village. And so, when they when they first got to the Caribbean islands, these entire villages of people, the slavers noticed that the boat was too heavy. And so, not only did they throw the people or put the people out, but they also put them on all their stuff to lighten the boat. So, in order to lighten the boat, they put the drums. Right. In order to lighten the boat, they put the song. And everything that they had brought with them, in order to lighten their boats, they gave the things of their culture that connected them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why the revolts, in, see, they still had the drums in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. They still had the songs. So they were still connected to who they had been in Africa. Uh -huh. Why? Because the, the evildoer was trying to lighten the boat. Uh -huh. uh, he thought What he thought was making his life more convenient was actually working right into God's plan. I need you to see that in your life, what the evildoer believes is working for his convenience is actually working right into your plan. The job that you lost is working right into God's plan. The diagnosis you received is working right into God's plan. Uh, what he's trying to do is get you to lighten the boat. Uh, lighten the boat. Uh, so, so what ends up happening, that they were able to communicate with each other because they're both of the way they lighten the boat. They were able to organize with each other. And so at the time of rebellion, they were able to move together. Mm -hmm. So God is saying in the spirit, I need my children to lighten their boats. Mm -hmm. uh, to rid themselves of the things that are holding them down. To rid themselves of, of, of the encumbrances. But in so doing, what you will find when you light your boat is you're leaving yourself with the things you need to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, you're adding by subtracting. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I got right here a couple things that are in our boat, right? So, see, wh when we lighten our boats, we get rid of sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. When you when you lighten your boat, you can go to bed at night. That's right. Uh, whole lot, of, whole lot of people got nice beds and can't get a good night's sleep. Oh, my God. You can get you can get the ones that let scoot up and down. <laughs> Press the button, they scoot and all that. You can get all that. But if you have no peace inside, you can't get a good night's sleep. That's right. I'd rather have Jesus and sleep on the floor yeah. than to have a silly posturepedic mattress and no peace inside. Oh and so one of the ways that we have to get, we have to lighten the boat. Uh, so we can get some sleep. My God, my God. Now, now, another, another thing, when we lighten the boat, we don't have to use artificial stimulants. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. The gorillion dollar drug trade. Mm. And I'm talking about legal and illegal drugs. Right. We made more money being sold with legal drugs than illegal drugs. That's right. uh, people think because the doctor gave it to you that you're not addicted to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we lighten the boat, yes, what we'll find is we don't have the need huh, for artificial or foreign substances, praise God. And let, when we lighten the boat, we, do, we no longer succumb to inactivity. One of the things that having a heavy boat will do is make you sit down. Yes. My boat's too heavy to move, so we're just going to sit here. Uh, I'm not going to pray. I'm going to stay home. You know, if my boat, y'all lighten the boat, my sister pal. Y'all lighten it and came on. Mm -hmm. The devil was trying to make it heavy. I can't find what I need, so I'm going to stay. But when you decided to lighten the boat, oh, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. so that I can get where I can, oh, so the boat can keep on moving, and I don't need my yes. boy, yes. 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 Now, now, when you lighten your boat, you no longer feel like a victim. Amen. Hallelujah. See, we have a whole lot of victim of Christians who feel victimized. Yes, yes. Oh, oh what I'm gonna do? Oh, the white man has treated us so bad. 
Oh, the governor, I can't believe they treat him. Everything is President Trump's fault now. As if the devil wasn't moving before President Trump. We as a Christian, we as the children of God should not be surprised that the devil is acting like the devil. That's right. Huh? So we gotta stop playing victim. When we lighten our boats, huh? then we stop feeling like victims. Stop playing the feel sorry for me role. And move on to what God has called us to do. And lastly, when we lighten our boat, and this one is, is one of the most uh, important ones, we get rid of the negative mindset. Yes. Huh? Those, those Africans who were enslaved and taken over there, they didn't, they didn't feel victimized. They fought back. They said, no matter what I gotta do, because you've given me what I need to fight with, I'm going to fight. Oh, God yes. has said, I've given you what you need to fight with. My All you gotta do is fight. Oh, yes. I've given you the weapons of warfare. They're not carnal, but they are mighty through God. But I need you to fight. Amen. Before you can fight, though, huh? Amen. You got to light your, your boat. Yes. Uh, go back to Jonah. Go back to Jonah right quick. Oh, yes. Thank you, God. Because here we see a guy who's on a boat. All right, brothers, but y'all know Jonah, the son of Amittai. I found out in Amittai, things kind of fit in. I found out. I didn't know this till I had to look up. But Amittai, what that's Jonah's daddy. <laughs> Jonah's daddy was the grandson of the widow of Zerphath. Ah! Yeah, you like that. Right? So Jonah came from a family where miracles had already taken place. Oh, yes. Is that anybody here? Oh, yes. You came from a family where miracles took place. Yes. Miracles took place with your grandmama. Stories that you grew up hearing. Uh, so you know that God can move. You know who God is. You know it. Huh? Now I'm not just talking about what mom and daddy have said. You know that God exists. Because you've seen him move. Jonah was a man who saw God move. Yes. Huh? He preached the word of God and he was given an assignment. Get thee to Nineveh, mm -hmm. that great city, and cry out against it. Right? But he, like many of us, tried to reason with God. He did not like the Ninevites. He did not think that that call was appropriate. He did not think that that was his ministry. And so if you look at, at verse 3, just I'm just put your finger there. The Bible says that he was running from the presence of the Lord. Oh I don't care what boat you're in. It does not move fast enough to run from the presence of the Lord. You cannot get high enough. You cannot smoke yourself away. From the presence of the Lord. Amen. You cannot shop yourself away. What is that? Uh, retail therapy. <laughs> Find that demon in the way. <laughs> oh God, take it away, take it away, take it away. It, uh, you can't spend enough to make yourself feel good to run from the presence of the Lord. So when you look at Jonah first, you gotta remember, here's not a guy who was running from Nineveh, he was running from God. Yes. Uh, and so some of us, our boats are heavy because we're running from God. Oh my God. Right? Okay. Uh, the boat feels heavy. It don't make no difference what the actual weight says. The boat feels heavy because I can't move because I'm running from God. Mm -hmm. There was that old musical, I believe it was, that said, your arms are too short to try to box with God. Amen. Amen. So, so go, go with me to verse 4. Chapter 1, verse 4. It says, make sure my Bible's not broken. Mine says, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. A tempest, a storm. Uh -huh. huh? Uh, uh, my Bible just told me that the Lord sent a storm. Yes. Uh -huh. We're quick to think that every storm comes from the devil. That everything that makes us uncomfortable has to be an act of the enemy. But then right here it says, no, no, the Lord sent a storm. Uh -huh. He did very specifically a tempest. That word tempest also means storm or test. Uh -huh. It also means time. So the Lord sent a test in the middle of the sea, in the middle of where he was trying to run away from. The Lord sent a test to test Jonah. Right? No matter where you are, when you think you're safe, no matter what you think your plan is going to accomplish, God can send a test. Oh, yes. uh, he will send a test of your faith. Because faith that is not tested is not reliable. 
Is your faith reliable? Hmm. Well, one thing I'll know, Sister Cummings, when he graduates, when you go down there to Greensboro and sit there at that graduation, you'll know for sure enough that God's a waymaker. Mm -hmm. Nobody will have to tell you because you'll remember sitting here this day. Yeah. And asking the Lord. So the next, now, now when the rest of them, when Kareem and them be ready to go, I, you, I'm not going to worry. I'm going to get some sleep. I'm not going to feel like a victim because I know. Amen. All right. Amen. Uh, uh, go, keep going, keep going. It said that he sent a storm mm -hmm. in the midst and that the mariners, the, the sailors, got scared. Mm -hmm. People who not supposed to be scared mm -hmm. got scared. Mm -hmm. the, the experts got scared. The people who knew what they were doing got scared. Isn't that what happened when the stock market crashed? Mm -hmm. When the real estate market went underneath? Mm -hmm. All these people who were supposed to be so smart yeah. got scared. Mm -hmm. And it became a national, international panic. And we in the house of God were panicking too. Mm -hmm. uh, why? God is always tested to the confinement of the experts. Mm -hmm. uh, the, people, the people whose earthly intelligence had limited intelligence. He's always taking it to that area so you can see they have no expertise either. God can move in a way that man cannot understand. Yes. And so the only way that you're going to keep up with God is to lighten your boat. That's it. Uh, so they get on this boat, they get on this boat, and the storm comes, and the boys are so scared, right? And then we jump down to verse 5. It says, The mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were into the ship. They tried to lighten their boat. Enlightenment of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay there fast asleep. Everything's going crazy, and the experts are telling Jonah he should be crazy too. Mm -hmm. Right? What they were trying to do, for those of you who sail, I don't think Sean probably the only sailor in here. But I found out in boats that a little bit of water is expected to get inside the boat. Mm -hmm. Every time you go out, you're going to get some water in your boat. So, so we got to stop expecting in our lives that we're going to have totally dry trips. Right. If you're going to get in the boat, your feet going to get wet. Don't wear your good shoes because <laughs> you're going to get wet. Right? The qu but but there's, a, there's a line, there's a, there's a space on the side of the boat called the water line. Mm -hmm. right? That is the expected height that the water will come next to your boat. If it comes above the water line, then too much water starts to get in your boat, and you could capsize. Mm -hmm. uh, you could turn to that way. And so what they were trying to do was to cast aside weight to remain back to the water line, to get back to even. A whole lot of us, God is saying, you're just trying to get back to even. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get you to the shore, and you're just trying to get back to even. Mm -hmm. Stop playing me cheap, God is saying. Uh, stop just looking for a short-term solution from a long-term God. Yes. Stop, stop, stop asking me, God, just let me make it to payday. My God, My God that's right. Uh, stop, stop asking me, Lord, let me make this next payment. Yes. Give, say, give me all the tuitions for all of my children. Amen, that's right. Because I can do that. Uh, I need you to be bold and profess. Yes. Stop, yes. stop, stop, stop just trying to get, get back to the water line. That's what the mariners was trying to do. Mm -hmm. And all the time, Jonah's in the bottom of the boat, sleep. Yeah. Now, sleep can mean two things in the Bible. It can mean... Ignorance or security. I'm either asleep because I'm not worried about it, or I'm asleep because I'm too dumb to know I'm in trouble. <laughs> Both of them look the same. Mm -hmm. I told you stupidity and bravery look alike <laughs> a lot of times. Amen. <laughs> and and so, so when we get here, verse 8 and 9 is where I really want us to, to, to make sure that we have, because I'm, I'm going to close, but verse 8 and 9. And it reads, so when they got here, the shipmaster, y'all, many who know the story, the captain of the ship comes to Jonah in verse 6, and he says, why are you sleeping? Oh, sleeper, what? get up. How can you sleep when everything around us is crashing? How can you sleep? How can this be God when everything's happening to black folks? How can this be God when it's divorces? How can it be God when, when good people are dying? How can this be God when black kids are killing each other on the street? Oh, you see the world we live in? It can't be no God. Huh? He says, wake up. But Jonah, he was asleep. And then we get to verse Eight. And, and when Jonah gets up, kind of wiping the sleep out of his eyes, uh, he comes upstairs. 
And then everybody's panicking. Everybody's panicking. Well, you, you, you. What, what, come here, come here. Verse 8 reads, They said unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. Mm -hmm. What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? Mm -hmm. They picked a fine time to ask. <laughs> Whole lot of people, we do that. Come on, somebody, my single people. In our relationship, we wait till we halfway married to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> We've been in the boat a whole long time before you ask what people thou art. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Am I right? Come on, somebody. Right. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> we need to ask what people thou art a little early. Before we before this boat took off, we needed to know, I need to know what people thou art, everybody in. Right. Right. Cause you never know when a storm's gonna come. But they wait they did like us. They wait till the storm comes, then you want to know what people. What you do for a living? <laughs> you ain't know I ain't had no job. <laughs> Come on, somebody. That should be one of the initial conversations. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, and my right sister Juan, if we go speed day, that should be one of our three questions. <laughs> do you work? Where do you work? Show me a W2 or something. They said, tell us, we pray thee, why is this evil upon us? What is your job? Where do you come? Who are your people? And he says unto them, like many of the brothers did, half of the truth. Notice, half, but now, now, Helen Joanne taught me that half the truth is half a lie. I thought my mother was unreasonable. She tell me half the truth is to lie to me halfway to. Right? But Jonah does that. Jonah says, they asked him who he was, what he does for a living, right? Who are your people? Where are you from? And why has this evil come upon us? The storm that we can't understand. Why? Because now they figured out that this storm is not from man. Now they figured out I'm in a situation that only God can get me out of. Yes. See, at some point, all of us are going to get in that situation. That's going to test your faith for real. Yes. When your checking account don't have enough zeros to address the issue. My God. When your influence doesn't have enough zeros or enough, enough uh, clout to address the issue, you found that this problem is now only one that God can fix. Oh, yes. uh, the, root of this, the root of this is not earthly. Mm -hmm. uh, the church, they, the world needs the church. Yes. yes. Huh? The world, God, we got to be the church. Yeah. we got to stay here. Yeah. We have to cry out and spread out. Because the world, whether they deny it or not, the, whether they make laws against it or not, at some point, the wind's going to blow, and they're going to ask the question, where is God? My, yes. my, my, my. Amen. Yes. Uh, people who are not saved still want to know where God is. My God. Uh, Amen. And, and you can see, in, in the, I, I watched Snoop Dogg do a gospel thing. Oh. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> if you understand it's coming back everybody, everybody, every knee at some point is going to bow yes. and every tongue is going to confess yes. but so when they came and asked Jonah, Jonah told half a lie mm -hmm. he said unto them I am a Hebrew mm -hmm. that's true yeah. I fear the Lord the God of heaven which hath made the sea and dry land, now you ain't tell me what you did for a living right. that you were preaching, that you had an assignment you didn't tell yes. me because then they would have known already, for sure enough. And you said you owe, you fear the Lord, but you ain't fear him enough to obey him. Oh my, he yes. told you, if you really fear him, you would be a Nineveh right now. <laughs> so don't get cute here talking about how deep you are. Right. Huh? Because mm -hmm. one of these days, when we have our pop-up system now with my millennials, I'm a millennial pop-up, one of the questions I need to ask is, what is spiritual? Right. What does it mean to say I'm spiritual? Your Facebook, when they say, what, what's your religious sound? Spurge. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Is that saying? I'm asking y'all, y'all can think about it and answer my question later. What, what, what does it mean? A whole lot of us is spurge. Uh, do you submit yourself to the Lord? Is he the governor of your life? Or do you recognize the Lord? Hmm. Do you recognize that he exists? Well, again, we'll, we'll get to that. Because it don't matter if you recognize him or not, it is a fact. Right? I never met Sammy Davis Jr., but I know he existed. Mm -hmm. 
He had a birth certificate and all that stuff. So whether I never said a word to him or not, I know he's there. The Lord is there whether you ever say a word to him or not. Yes. Uh, that's not the question is what is your relationship with him? Yes. That's, right. that's the question. So I got y'all three questions for the speed date. Mm. <laughs> All right, God. Maybe you only need three minutes. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> guess what? If the answers ain't right, the date is over. Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna decide in three minutes whether you. Right. You're not gonna grow on me. Right. <laughs> well, I just we ain't making it, but after a while, he be. All right, gonna be after a while. All right, God. Now with Courtney Michelle, <laughs> but gonna be no after a while. That's right. I don't. Let's stay engaged for six years. <laughs> <laughs> Please! Alright. I'm not gonna step on the right toes no more. No, no, no. Verse 8 and 9. He said he 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 feared the Lord who made the sea and the dry land. And then verse 10 said the men were scared. They got even more scared because even while he was lying, they knew what he was saying. Uh -huh. uh, understand, the world doesn't get fooled by pretty talk. That's right. That's the church that does it. We fall for stuff that we didn't fall for in the world. Uh -huh. uh, you can't, when you talk to a young lady from the street, you don't have to be able to give her the same flowery thing you give a young lady from church. <laughs> oh, the Lord's blessing me in this time of, of, of occupational fasting. <laughs> I heard that before. I'm on an occupational fast. <laughs> no, seriously, a preacher. Yeah, this friend said, I ain't got no job. <laughs> I'm gonna occupy. No, no, fast is on purpose, ain't it, Sean? If you not know, you're just laid off. <laughs> if you ain't got no job because you don't want one and the Lord is sustaining you, then we will call that an occupational fast. If you came late every day and the man told you to go home, you got fired. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So go down with me. Verse 11. <laughs> the, men, the men, verse 10, they were exceedingly afraid, and they said unto him, Why has you done this to us? Why did you? Now, because now they have seen the problem. Before Jonah realized the problem or admitted the problem out loud, everybody else knew the problem. Right. They said, Jonah, why? He still hasn't said he's a preacher. They said, Why have you done this to us? For you. Exceedingly sorrowful they were. You gonna get us killed. Messing with you is gonna get us killed. Because uh, I understand that they they embrace now the power of God. Everybody on this boat recognizes who's in charge now. Ain't nobody worried about getting the torches. We just trying to get out of the way of this storm. Uh, and they recognize that in order to get out of the way of the storm, we gotta lighten our boat. Yes. Huh? I, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we got to lighten our boat. And so verse 11 said, they said unto him, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea is wrought and was tempestuous. And so now Jonah comes to the recognition uh, that God wants each of us to come to. After he has run from God, after he has lied on God. After he has tried to do everything his way, what was good in his own mind, he says unto them, take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. Jonah had, in the beginning of the book, Jonah had a desire. The desire was to go to Tarshish. But he had to throw away that desire. He had to lighten the boat. Right. God is saying, some of us, your mind's been locked on things so long, your way. But he's telling you, you got to throw it away. Yes. It wasn't my will for you. Throw it away. Mm -hmm. huh? Don't be mad you didn't make it to the NBA. Be glad that you are where you are. That's right. You have to throw away your old perception of yourself. Yes. Right. At some point, I, I need you to throw that into the sea. I need you to lighten the load. As a matter of fact, he said, cast me into the sea. Remember now, Deacon James, Jonah was not being a hero. Mm. He jumped into the water, was being cast into the water, expecting to die. He was giving himself up. Uh, giving up his old life to lighten the boat. 
God is saying, if you want me to bless you, I need you all to take your former life and throw it away. I need all of you or I need none of you. But I'm tired of accepting half of you. I'm tired of one day a week having you. I'm tired of you only praying to me when you want something. I'm tired of only praying to me when you got food on your table. I need all of you. I need you to lighten the boat. Huh? If you want me to move, if you want to make it to the shore, because the storm is coming, and the storms will get worse and worse and worse. And if you don't lighten your boat, you're not going to make it. Huh? I see that it's you. Huh? You're looking around, it ain't the economy, it ain't President Trump, it's you. Yes. The reason the storm is raging in your life is because you are being disobedient. Jesus. And God is saying, if you want to make it to a place of safety, you have to lighten the boat. Mm. Throw away all those things that you thought about yourself. Mm. Cast them over. Huh? All of that hatred and anger that you've been holding, the resentment you've been holding toward your daddy and one man, mm. throw it over. Mm. Huh? All, all, the, all the sadness for the things that didn't happen. I did have this opportunity, or I didn't have that opportunity, or I, I got diagnosed with this. Why me? Throw it over. Throw it over. Yes. Lighten the boat up because now it's time to move. Yes. My God. Yes. To the other side. Yes. Now, now. So after that, now, around my way, we didn't, okay, don't jump. We just threw them over. But they didn't, the boys didn't do that, did they? They kept to their plan. Mm. Even after Jonah has already said it's my fault. Even after God has demonstrated what needs to be done. The Bible says in verse 13, they kept rowing. Trying to do it their way. Mm. Let's row and see if we can make it on our own. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. That's where some of us are in this room right now. God has already revealed to you what needs to be done and you're still rowing. Mm. Uh, you're wondering why you're so tired. You're wondering why you can't get no sleep because you're still rowing when he said, lighten the boat. Uh, you're still trying to do things your way. Uh, still trying to go to places you want to go and then ask God to bless you. Wondering why business is shrinking up. Because you're doing things your way. Uh, God can give you more money than you can earn. Amen. Uh, wondering why opportunities are not moving in your way. Because you're still trying to roam yourself. The Bible says again, verse 13, Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land but they could not. Hmm. Hey, but they could. See, understand. Whew. We serve a God of conjunctions, of buts. Right? But they tried to rope, but they could not. Right. Let's say I've tried that. The enemy rises up against me, but he cannot succeed. Yes. Huh? Uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God. Right? God, write this down, and please put it in parentheses. God's got a big old butt. Every time the enemy tries to put something in your way, God has a butt. Yes, but God. You know what? I'm poor, but. I, 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 I've never had this opportunity, and I'm not qualified, but. But. Nobody in my family has ever done this, but. Uh -huh. in, the middle of, in the middle of all of these things you got to remember God always has a but yes. and it's big you know what Pre President Obama we thought they'd never been a black president but that's right Amen. <laughs> I thought we still was going to be at James Madison Middle School but oh, oh yes and, uh, hey, there's always a but in the middle of the thing and so they're trying to roll yes. and God says but <laughs> the but they could not. Wherefore they cried, verse 14, unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Don't let us die for this man's life. Lay not upon innocent blood him on us. So now they snitching. As we were saying around our way. Now you come on a plea. Now you realize this dude right here is going to get us all caught. More men are in jail because they got snitched on than because they got caught. Am I right? Dig the, the police, you tell me. <laughs> More do, and you're, like I tell my school, your friend will tell on you. Yeah. All my kids in school, Cam, all of y'all, your friends will snitch on you. Yes, they do. So y'all do dirt together, you think, oh, my boy, my boy. <laughs> all you gotta do is come in, Mr. King. God forbid you go to Mrs. King's office. <laughs> 
before she shut the door. Show us all. Let's show us all. They will tell, am I right about it? They will tell chapter and verse. <laughs> y'all know I'm telling the truth. Some of y'all will snitch with yourself. <laughs> Praise God. But by, by verse 14, they're asking God. They said, God, please don't put it on us. No more. Don't let innocent blood from us be shed for this dude who was disobedient to you. So they took up Jonah and lightened the boat. They took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from raging. We got rid of Jonah. Now our problems are solved. So if you're a mariner, life just got good. The water calmed down. You can sail back. Everything's chill, right? But what about Jonah? See, it's easy for us to forget. We can stop right there, and I can close the Bible, and we can shout about lightening the boat, and how when you lighten the boat, God blesses you. But what about Jonah? What about the one who's in the water now? Uh, do we still remember him? Because it's easy for us to just worry about ourselves. Because our lives are better, Libya. What about the one who's in the water? God is saying, we hear great Bethesda, we can't forget about the saints that's in the water. Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, we can't forget, when we go down to the, to the park and feed the homeless brothers and sisters, we can't forget about the ones who's in the water. Yes. We go to the jail, we can't forget about our brothers and sisters that's in the water behind the wall. Yes. Uh, what about them? Because what happened with Jonah, Jonah was cast over giving himself up and he was prepared to die. But if you kept reading, one other day I'll talk about, but the Lord had prepared a great fish. Yes. <laughs> the fish comes up and eats Jonah, consumes him, and three days in the belly of the whale, of the fish, he stays. And then that same fish comes and drops him off on dry land. Because uh, God had a plan. And guess what, y'all? Guess what Jonah does when he comes out on dry land? He goes to Tarshish. Why? Because God's, God's plan don't change because of your disobedience. Uh, what God has for your life don't change yet. And, and he, sometimes some of us have been in the belly of the fish for a long time. But when he lets you out, you got to do what he says. My God. Your boat is light, but you still got to be obedient. obedient. Right. Now that I've lightened your boat, don't oh put stuff God. back in it. Oh, yes, uh, that's right. Now that I've done it, <laughs> don't go back and call the same numbers. Now that I've lightened your boat, that's right. I got rid of them for you. Don't call them again. <laughs> don't allow, do we call them again? No. Oh, my God. Do we call them again? Huh? He said, now that, I, now that I've delivered you, that's remain right. delivered. Delivered. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then if you want me to use you, you got to remain delivered. Stop going back. Now that your boat is light, don't make it heavy again. Because mm -hmm. he has a need for you. But you have to lighten your boat. Put your hands together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah.